Hey everyone, this is Royal with Paternity University. And once again, thank you so much to tuning into this video. Uh, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the different types of DNA tests that you can offer. Not all of them are paternity tests. Uh, in case the father is not around or is unwilling to test or is even deceased in some cases, um, you can either uh, test you know, his mother, right? A grandparent test or his brother and sister, assuming that they are brother and sister. Uh, and also you can do a siblingship test between two children that he may have had. Uh, so those are the different types of tests you can offer. But I'm gonna start with number one, paternity, right? A standard paternity, just like that, paternity, paternal, right? The father, you are testing the alleged father. That is the primary standard test that we, you know, people mostly get, okay? Um, with that test is the alleged father and the child. The mother can be included as well to strengthen DNA profile, absolutely, but it can just be the alleged father and the child. The results of that is either gonna be 0%, not the father, or 99.9% .9 the father, all right? There's no in between, there's no guesswork, anything of that nature, all right? You, you, you do it with a reputable laboratory um, that is accredited, it is going to be either 0% or 99.9%. .9%. Now, what if the father is nowhere to be found? Uh, what if he is deceased? Uh, what if he just does not want to test and has not been able to be contacted for, for years? What if that? Those situations definitely happen. We all know that. There's a chance, and, and, and part of the training that's in the course is you go through kind of a, a list uh, or a checklist of, of what you could possibly do. So uh, an option is to test his parents. That is called a grandparentage test. You usually want to test, or you always want to test, if possible, his mother, because you know, you know, that, you know, or they know that she had him, right? So you would test the grandchild against either both the grandmother and grandfather, you know, uh, paternal grandmother and grandfather, or just the grandmother and the mom, all right? The mom to strengthen the DNA profile and include her as well, okay? That's one option, all right? Uh, and a lot of people, they'll, they'll get those sometimes um, for like social security benefits in case the father actually did pass away. And social security administration would say, hey, you need to do a DNA test uh, to prove. And that usually is where the grandparentage DNA test comes in. Another option if the father is, is not around uh, this is, 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 is another common one is a siblingship test, right? A paternal siblingship test. Let's say he had, uh, two kids, uh, and you want to prove two or more kids and you want to prove that they are related paternally. You can test the siblings as well. You can include the mother as well. Like I said, if possible, um, if available, um, to strengthen that DNA profile and, and eliminate, you know, any, any other aspects. So, uh, mother and then both of the siblings to show if there is a paternal relationship between those two siblings. And it's not always with sibling children. Most of the time when I do that test, it is actually with adult children where the alleged father is deceased or is in a whole other city and he's not going to come in and test. So the adult children that are 35, 40, 50 years old even sometimes are trying to determine if they are related through their father, right, through their alleged father. Uh, another test that can be done is the avuncular test. That is, uh, the word uncle is in it. That's how I always remember it. Avuncular, un uncle, okay? And that is when you can test the child against the alleged father's brother or sister, okay? Alleged father's brother or sister, assuming, of course, that the alleged father is related to his brother and sister by the same father, all right? You see how it can get a little confusing sometimes. Um, so, those are, those are the different types, and those are DNA relationship tests. Those are not paternity tests because the alleged father is not around, okay? The final option that you have, and I wouldn't say the final option because it's it's a secondary option, really, um, if, if possible, is a deceased or post-mortem paternity test. Um, and that is when the alleged father is deceased and either um, they have what is called a blood spot card at the... Um, a local mortician's office, um, or I'm sorry, not the mortician's office, the county morgue office, the medical examiner, um, or the deceased father, his his remains, his body is still at the funeral home. And, you know, upon um, permission, legal permission from the legal next of kin, not just anybody, all right, not his cousin, 
or not his friend or something like that, like the actual legal next of kin that is able and has signed the death certificate, you can go in and collect samples from the alleged, the deceased alleged father's body. That has been done. I have administered two of those tests before. Um, so it's definitely possible as well. Those are usually for, you know, survivors benefits, social security, et cetera. If the alleged father has either a passed under, uh, extenuating circumstances, uh, violent, you know, passing, uh, where they would usually store a, a blood spot card um, at the coroner's office, or he is still at the funeral home and his body is still there. Um, so those are the different types of tests you can offer. I mean, I mean, what you should offer. <laughs> um, most of the tests that you will do are going to be straight up just paternity tests, whether it is a legal paternity test, a non-legal paternity test, a prenatal paternity test. That's most of the tests, but you as a future or existing uh, private DNA agency, right, or consultant, you should know the different tests that you can offer to solve that problem because it's not always going to be cut and dry. And in Paternity University, I teach that specifically what to offer, when, how to field those questions and everything. So if you're interested, the course is available still at paternityuniversity.com and you can get it and learn how to properly field those questions and learn how to really become a consultant because that's what you are. You're a consultant. A lot of people have no idea what to do or where to go. They want to start an Amazon and get a kit. No, that's not always applicable to everybody's situation. So anyway, if you liked it, like, comment, subscribe, share. Thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate it. Until next time.